Hey guys, it's Bree. Thanks for joining me for another video. If you're new here, you should go ahead and press the subscribe button and join the brigade. We have an awesome group here of future nurses, future healthcare workers, and just people in their 20s trying to figure out life in adulting. So you should join our group and we always share advice. We're very supportive, so you would love it here. Today, it's crazy because I have been a nurse for officially a year. Today is July 7th and I started working on July 8th of last year, 2019. So tomorrow will be officially a year, but by the time you guys see this video, it will have been a year. And I just wanted to kind of explain how I feel about everything that I've been through this year. Definitely hasn't been a smooth sailing year. So I just kind of wanted to explain my experience and what I've learned and some knowledge that I would like to pass on to you guys as future healthcare workers yourselves. So let's get right into it. So first things first, one of the biggest things that I can say is that I'm just super grateful to be in the position that I am, to be a nurse, even though it is kind of crazy out there. Um, I am in a pretty stable environment um, on a med search floor. I have a job. I haven't been furloughed. I don't get my overtime hours, but I do get all of my 36 hours that we normally get as a nurse. If you don't know, nurses work about three days a week most times because we work 12 hour shifts. So we only work three days a week, 12 hour shifts, 36 hours a week. So our paychecks usually have about, what, 52 hours on them? Did I say 50? <laughs> I said 52, but I meant 72. And then sometimes we get extra hours just because of staying late and coming in early. So about 72 hours on a paycheck. We get paid every two weeks. Uh, my shift, I have worked both night and day shifts. Uh, I prefer day shifts, I think, just because my mindset is better on day shift. Night shift is a little bit smoother, I would say. I feel like you're not as rushed to get things done. You don't have doctors and family members and everything. But I think at this point in my career, I do prefer day shift just because I am on a normal schedule like everyone else almost. Um, as working in the daytime and sleeping at night instead of opposite which makes it really hard to hang out with people which we haven't really been doing because of covid but it just makes your life a little bit more difficult because you don't know when to get stuff done and i like to be productive during the day even though y'all today i woke up at literal 3 30. <laughs> it was literally 3 30 p.m when i woke up i just i slept for 12 hours my watch literally says you slept 12 hours and three minutes. So I don't know what the heck was going on with me last night, but I slept a really long time. But the thing is you can do that on day shift and still get stuff done on your days off. And I did night shift, I think two and a half months or so. So I, I tell them that I'm flexible. If they need me on night shift, then I can do it. But going back to what I was talking about, nursing is a challenge it is a challenge but that's part of the reason why i love nursing is because it challenges me every single day like every, no two days are going to be the exact same it's just not and it challenges me in my time management it challenges me in my critical thinking which are both things that i struggle with so I'm getting stronger by learning these new skills of nursing and just balancing things. It's amazing still to me that I can balance six patients care, talk to all their family members, update everybody, update the doctors on how the patients are doing, pass all their meds, do all their assessments, all of that, and still walk home and be okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> when I first got to work, and this is like my second point, I guess. First point is that nursing is challenging, but that's part of the reason why I love it. Because it's a new challenge every single day. And even though it can be difficult, it's not too hard for me. And it's not too hard for you either. Point number two would be that 
when you first become a nurse like in those first couple of months you're gonna think everything is ridiculously like out of your league like you can't do it but you can you just gotta stick with it and like figure out ways to kind of manage kind of prioritize prioritization is a big thing and once you learn kind of what's the most important thing to get done first and second and third then everything will be just a whole lot smoother for you going forward my second point along with that would be to new nurses it's gonna get easier hey so yeah forget what i just said it doesn't ever get easier you just figure it out and figure out your flow and it, you get better go back and review especially based on whatever floor you're on if you are new to my channel and haven't been with us then you wouldn't know that i am on a renal floor so even though we went over you know a little section of renal during med search class and during critical care ish um i really had to go back and do i would say an in-depth review on kidney disease and renal function and what kind of symptoms those people have what are we most worried about because i was like why are they so worried about electrolytes on this floor like i had never heard that we were going to replace so much potassium and so much magnesium and all of this but it's important on my floor because they're renal patients and electrolytes can get out of whack very fast extremely out of whack which can affect the heart and everything so it's important for these patients that they get their electrolytes replaced so it's just interesting i would definitely say when you get your job offer make sure you do like an in-depth review on whatever area you're going into so i have 10 more points that i want to go through very quickly number one is that i'm really grateful for my health my current health routine and that I have faith in God, in Jehovah, in Jehovah Jireh, in Jehovah Rapha, in Christ. I'm so grateful for my health and for my faith because I don't know how these patients go through what they go through without having faith, period. Number two, time management is a daily strive and a daily goal for all nurses <laughs> like because there's not one set way to do things it's like oh today i'm gonna have to do it this way and tomorrow i'm gonna have to do it this way and the next shift after that i may have to do it that other way guys this used to be the source of severe anxiety for me and if you have those feelings they're normal but it does get better and you do figure it out you figure out all your patience you figure out your flow just stick with it um chart in the room with your patients at the beginning of your shift this is my number one probably biggest tip because trying to time manage discharges and transfers and admissions and med administration and assessments and eventually precepting as well and hourly rounding it's tough and what i found is that if i chart in the room then I don't feel like I have to, like, cause I know a lot of people will go in and just do their med pass for everybody and then go back around and chart everything. And I just don't feel like that's the most efficient way for me to do things, especially cause my patients sometimes will take a long time either talking to me or taking their meds or asking me questions about their care. So while I'm doing all that and updating their families and all of that, I can be charting what I'm seeing, what I'm doing, neuro, uh, alert and oriented times four, you know, Glasgow coma scale, 16, all of that, <laughs> you know, like just get it done while you're in the room. Or at least I would say if it's a really busy day and you know that you may not have time to chart everything in the room, I would say at least chart the pertinent things. Like if they came in for altered mental status, then yes, you need to do neuro and you need to do like whatever else is abnormal. That way, whenever you go back, you're like, wait a second, why didn't I chart this? Oh, because it was normal. Let me go through and click that everything was normal. You know what I'm saying?
Number four, churning always comes after patient care. And I say this in the sense of, this is the stuff outside of your initial assessment. So if you chart your initial assessments in the room with your patients, then you don't have to worry about those for the rest of the day. But the other stuff as far as like care plans and I don't know, charting intake and output, you, that stuff comes after like wound care and the other things that you need to get done, dressing changes, the other stuff that you need to get done that day. So you can put that other, like the care plans and stuff, you need to get them done because or else you're gonna stay late and your director's gonna be upset with you. But you can push them aside for a little bit until you finish your wound care and that other stuff that I was talking about. Five is write down your meds at the beginning of your shift on your brain. Your brain is very important. When you're first starting out, you do need to write your meds down just so that you know that you know what all of those meds are for so that you can explain it to your patient and then also where they are because there's so many different places that your meds can be and that's something you'll learn on your own floor depending on your floor you'll have you know like a fridge the pixis we have two pixises on our floor plus the fridge plus uh their bins so the meds could literally be anywhere plus sometimes the meds are already in the room so i would say at the beginning of the shift whenever you're getting report from the night nurse or the day nurse depending on what shift you're on go in the room introduce yourself to your patient get report but also kind of survey the room clear out things from the room that don't need to be there if there's meds in the room either remember that that med is in the room or bring it out and put it in the patient's bin that way you know where they are. Make sure you have everything and have looked everywhere before you go back into the room. So don't be like, oh, well, let's go in the room and you know, I've picked out what I got from the Pixis and that should be enough. No, search in the fridge, <laughs> search in their bins, and then you can go into the room, you know, and there might be other places on your floor that you have to look for meds, but make sure you're doing that and that way your time management won't be off by going into the room and not having everything that you need and have gowned up and everything for an isolation and then have to go back out and do everything again. It's just not time efficient. <laughs> um, a nurse is really only as good as the team surrounding them. I have an awesome team. Whenever I'm swamped, they usually come in and try and help me. Whenever they're swamped, I always try and help everybody. Um, even with like things that we just have to get checked off with another nurse we're usually really good about saying hey we need a nurse down here and then i'll help you sign off yours over there you know even with cleaning up patients if we know that one patient is going to be like turn q2 constantly incontinent then even nurse the nurses and especially the techs will help and step up and you know we'll help and get everything done for that patient to make sure so we have a really nice team and I love it. Everyone's very supportive, especially when I first got there. Everybody was super supportive and just making sure that I had everything that I needed, that I understood everything. Any questions I had, I could always go to my team. And that's still like that to this day. I, I still have questions often <laughs> and they still are able to answer those for me without giving me like a, you know, like a glare or like a, like a look so that's always really nice number seven is nursing is really 24 hours i i know people say this a lot but like the other day i stayed late because i was trying to get everything done and that's good i feel like you should always have the goal to get everything done on your shift and you should always be working until the very last second to get everything done but you should not stay over to get everything done like when you are giving report that means that your care for that patient is finished so that means that everything from that point on <laughs> needs to go to the next nurse especially when you get those transfers at like 6 p.m admissions at 6 p.m sis you gonna have to pass off something okay you're you can't do it all like you just can't but just don't make it a habit like i feel like that's the thing don't make it like an every shift like 
oh, you have to go do this and this and this that I didn't do. Like, sorry. Like, it shouldn't be like that every single shift. Number eight is remember the first, the most important thing we learned in nursing school, which is safety. So whenever you have something that looks concerning, talk to your charge, um, you know, be very attentive to your patients. And even when you don't know what to do, just think safety. Like, like I said, just trying to figure out what you can do for your patient. Just think safety first. It goes a really long way. Um, number nine, your admission always comes at the most inconvenient time. Like I said, those six to 6.30 PM admissions are always very nice. Um, but you just have to do what you can do and then, you know, leave it for the next nurse. Like, to be honest with y'all, like, you just literally have to do that. <laughs> the last one is every hard shift eventually comes to an end, which is very true. I mean, you just have to remember that whenever you're going through a very rough time or you're just having a really tough shift ask for help number one don't be too prideful to ask for help um number two is prioritize and then number three is that it will eventually come to an end and like i said you might just have to pass off a few things because you had a really crazy day but don't feel bad about having a really crazy day just don't <laughs> As a summary, I love nursing. Like I said, it is always a challenge that I'm up for. I absolutely love getting to connect with my patients. I also know that my goal and like my why is changing, but I also, with everything that's been going on, I'm realizing that my place in society as a black nurse really is important and not just important at the bedside but i know that my goal in the future will be to help to decrease health disparities what's going around right now where there is more black maternal mortalities than any other race i feel like i can advocate for those black mothers i feel like i can advocate for my black patients and i know that my role as a black nurse is important as you can probably tell, this is something that I'm pretty passionate about. I really want to be in a space where I can advocate for Black lives through the healthcare industry. And I believe that my space might be in women's services or L&D, mother, baby, postpartum kind of role. And that's where I see myself in the near future. So you guys be praying with me for that best and take on roles that will grow you and help you to learn more and more like i just took a role as chair from my floor for our magnet redesignation which i will probably go into more in a future video um but this process will help me to learn more about magnet it'll help me learn more about being a leader in corporate professional situation I can just see how it will grow me so I feel like you need to take positions that will grow you um, one of my co-workers just got promoted to charge nurse after only being there for about a year and four three or four months so uh, that was pretty cool to see that people are being promoted very early on in their careers Sorry about all the voiceovers in this here video, but I definitely forgot to do an outro. So here's my outro. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it, go ahead and remember to press the like button. And if you want to join our crew, then go ahead and subscribe while you're there as well. Thank you so much for all of you guys support through this first year of nursing. If you have any further questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will have everything, some links for other videos that you guys might like in my description. But yeah, thank you guys for stopping by and I will see you next week.